This is Baja SAE Shop Talk, the official podcast of the Baja SAE series. Hey guys, this is Mike Sawyer, the video and podcast producer for the Baja SAE series. And of course, we are here with another episode of Shop Talk and getting ready for going back to Tennessee Tech. I'm excited for this because this is, of course, uh, the location I first personally got to uh, be a part of Baja SAE way back in 2016. And it's always great to go back to that first one. Uh, you always remember your first Baja, right? And, uh, and I'm excited because we're going to uh, this will this will be his first Baja at Tennessee Tech as well. The new lead organizer for uh, Baja SAE Tennessee Tech is Will Brookshire on the line with us. How you doing, Will? Doing good. Hey, how do you feel getting into your first Baja as a lead organizer? I know you, you we were talking about you got to attend Louisville. You know, this is a place with a lot of Baja history with Tennessee Tech. Like, what's your, what's your vibe going into this? It's been exciting. It's also been a lot of learning in a very short amount of time. So it's been a fun challenge to take on. And it's very exciting because I, I love, like, your facility there. It's on your, your agricultural uh, grounds, right? So, like, That's there's correct. actually a, a great facility there that the event actually takes place around. Yeah, so this takes place on a farm, and one of the advantages of that is they have the agricultural pavilion, so that means that there's actually an indoor area. We do the maneuverability inside the arena, and of course, one of the biggest benefits is there's a place for them to go in, get out of the shade, or get out of the sun, and there's also restrooms available instead of just the Portage Johns like normal. And for those, uh, Cookville is a great little town. Um, there's some great, I remember I found a nice uh, ice cream shop I was there last time, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, I, so I'm hoping that everybody's going to enjoy it. It's going to be nice if... Uh, you're a city dweller to get out there and uh, and enjoy out in Cookville. Absolutely. And it makes it easy to get to any uh, restaurants you want to go to. There's not a lot of traffic to deal with for going to get supplies, whether it be automotive or hardware, whatever it is you need. It's relatively close and you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to find it. So let's get into it. Uh, you know, first, let's let's talk about the facility. Let's talk what people are going to expect when they first get to the grounds there uh, later this week. Uh, what is the first thing that people need to keep in mind when they're arriving uh, at the at the event. Yeah, so the first thing to keep in mind is we will be staging people actually at the university instead of the venue, and we do that because the turn into the venue is off of a, a 55 mile an hour zone, and it's only two lanes, so that can be a little bit dangerous. So people will need to go first to the uh, staging area at the university in order to receive a parking token. They will then be sent over in small groups of probably four or five trailers at a time, and then they will show that parking token to get access to the venue, at which point they will be guided to uh, the back of the building to pull around, drop their trailer, and at that point, the trailer will be taken by a tractor, actually, and put into location or a paddock, which are kind of a tight fit around the pavilion. And also, uh, keep in mind that you cannot unload your cars while you're waiting in line. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, so, from that, like, you know, looking at the event, uh, you know, what are what are some key things that people need to know as they're attending the event over those, uh, those several days? A couple of key things. First of all, uh, we have some weather forecasted as rain, so make sure you've got some rain gear. Uh, again, you know, there'll be indoor areas for people to go into to shelter right next to, you know, the paddocks. But uh, just make sure you're prepared for that because, as we all know, Baja goes on unless it gets really dangerous with the weather. Uh, so, you know, make sure you're prepared for hot weather. Make sure you've got sunscreen, all that sort of stuff uh, ahead of time. And make sure you bring your own water and everything. Because while we may have some on site, it probably won't be enough for everyone. So make sure you're well prepared. It's not that hard, again, to get off site. You'll get supplies as you need it. But it's usually easier if you've got it all up front. As far as, like, things on site, like I said, there's uh, there's it, it, there's nice because there is the facility. So there's real bathrooms. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and a lot of shelter and everything like that if you do need to get out of sun or anything like that. And I, I remember the facility. I remember that, that building being a little cooler if it's a little hot outside, too. Yeah, it's air conditioned. So nice. uh, a lot of people like to watch the uh, – so even at Endurance, we actually run part of the track through uh, – the arena so people could go in and get out of the sun and sit and watch cars drive through the arena section of the track on Sunday as well. So that's a good way to cool yourself down if you start to get a little overheated. And also they'll actually have breakfast concessions available there for uh, the teams on every day. And uh, we will have maybe a couple of meals provided on Saturday and Sunday that will probably take place maybe outside. But uh, yeah, it's nice to be able to go in and just again, shelter from the sun because it is supposed to be 86. And again, with the rain, it's going to be very buggy. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, any rules, regulations we need to know that's very special to you guys for, uh, uh, you know, the work being done in the paddocks this year? We do not allow, of course, grills that have coal. So you cannot use a, a coal grill. Um, otherwise, I can't think of anything off the top of my head um, aside from, you know, no smoking, no alcohol, anything like that that's standard for a college-related event. 
I do also believe that no open toed shoes are allowed on site, and that is a safety for I mean your own yeah. tootsies. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. And of course, that's just a general Baja rule. Yeah, absolutely. You want to make sure that you've got your uh, some shoes on that provide protection because people are going to be moving things around a lot. There's going to be a lot of traffic through those areas. Uh, personally, I, I've picked up steel toed uh, uh, shoes just to be safer. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, definitely um, smart. Oh, and uh, another thing I want to mention about rules is so we are going to have recycling set up. So I will go over this on the first day, but we want to encourage everyone to please make sure that you recycle properly and do not contaminate the recycling bins with trash. Now, and, and we're going to have a welcome pack, uh, welcome packet going out soon. So that should also contain, you know, some information to help with people as they arrive and understand what to do. Let's first look at the dynamic day. What do we have to expect from the events? What are the three events? What can you kind of tease us with? I know you probably don't want to reveal everything that's <laughs> going to be happening with some of these tracks, right. <laughs> but uh, until they, 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 they lay eyes on them. But uh, yeah, what can they tell them about what that dynamic day is going to look like? Yeah, so again, maneuverability will actually be inside the arena. So we're going to set up, we may move a little bit of dirt inside that arena. That is very nice clay soil they have in there for uh, horse shows and whatnot. So we can't do too much, but we will uh, maybe have a little bit of uh, uh, some jumps or, you know, maybe some small conical things for them to go around with off-camera turns. But uh, the arena course will be mostly just about navigating through the uh, course in a quick manner. For suspension and traction, that is going to be built primarily into a hillside. So there'll be a lot of up and down that hill over the different obstacles that we have uh, kind of just carved out of that section of the hill on the course. So that's uh, the big challenge there will be navigating those obstacles while you're going up and down that hill. So we do have a sled pool. And so uh, this actually takes place through the barn area where they hold the livestock during shows. And so we kind of open the middle of that area up and they will attach to that sled and see how far they can pull it. Excellent. I think that's the same area where Tekka is, uh, Tekka is usually taking place as well, right? That is correct. Yeah, tech inspection routes through there. Uh, we will also have, of course, you know, four-wheel drive check. And then next to that area is the design arena where design takes place. Excellent. It is very interesting, uh, as you students will we'll see, uh, uh, seeing you guys piled up uh, uh, watching tech through the uh, through the pens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then finally, the dirt course actually goes all the way out through the farm. So you're going to be traveling through uh, areas that uh, cows and sheep normally roam. So it's going to be a lot of varied terrain to get a lot of up and down uh, stuff to, to navigate. There's going to be a creek in the middle of the course. So all sorts of exciting stuff. I love the creek. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, you could say it's the, it's the last uh, Baja course with a true water feature. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> One of the more interesting endurance courses um, that I think I've seen amongst uh, amongst uh, uh, all the events. Some great stuff for Dynamic Day. I recall the S&T course uh, being particularly tricky with that hill. That yep. People will come off it and, and roll right out of bounds on the, on the next curve and things like that. So, so definitely some stuff to check out for. I imagine there'll be some similar uh, challenges in this one this year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it'll it'll be uh, kind of similar to what we've done in the past because we like that kind of up and down feature. But yeah, you'll have to be careful, especially on the jumps that go downhill is where people tend to, <laughs> to lose control. And of course, I do have, as we mentioned, if you did get a chance to watch or listen to on the podcast on this podcast feed, the May update for the uh, SAE CDS Action News update. Uh, there's going to be a lot of sponsors there on site. So I want to give a shout out there to uh, what you can expect with Altair, Cummins, DSO Works, of course, uh, providing those uh, T-shirts, the Ford Motor Company, Honda America, Magna International, Oshkosh, and Polaris Industries. Of course, Polaris was always there yep. uh, with their uh, big truck and everything. So, yep. um, so it's going to be it's going to be it's a it's a nice collection of uh, companies for you guys to be talking to. Of course, make sure your uh, resumes are updated online or uh, or with you and everything. And uh, and always please take an opportunity to talk to them and all the volunteers that are uh, uh, you know usually you know a lot of people from all these companies are involved in that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the nice thing about having this indoor facility is that you can actually go inside to talk to the sponsor. So it'll be in the air conditioning. Uh, so if you know you want to change clothes or anything before you talk to them, there's actually a set of showers and whatnot to do that. So you can kind of get dressed up if you're doing a little bit of a uh, job interview type stuff. Uh, and so again, they'll be spread out kind of actually at the top of the maneuverability arena throughout all four days. If they want to, we'll make space for them at that kind of uh, mezzanine. Hey, looking forward to meeting you, Will, in person out there at, uh, yeah. at this event. Uh, looking for it always. Uh, the Tennessee's always treated me very, very well. Yeah, it is. A, like you said, it's just a really neat place to hold. It's a perfect facility for this type of stuff. All right. Thank you so much. And of course, everybody, we'll see you this week. Make sure you get pre prepared, get the final screws in on your uh, Baja car. We'll see you out there looking forward to seeing everything hit the track and, uh, and, and see you out there. Until next time, please stay safe out there.
Thanks for listening to Baja SAE Shop Talk. As always, we want to hear from you, so email BajaSAE at SAE.org. The show notes for this episode, as well as all others, can be found at www.BajaSAE.net slash podcast. Stay safe, and we'll catch you next episode.